My motto growing up was, I'll show them, I'll show them but I would say that to myself. And I grew up in the 70s, where the love boat and Fantasy Island, and I very much got lost in the fantasy of TV and um, the escapism of radio and the notion that when I graduate from high school, I am never coming back. And when I do, I'll, I'll show them. I was only one of four blacks in my graduating class from high school, so, I did not have a whole lot of black experiences going to school, but my parents, being the perfect people that they were, always made sure that we were accustomed to our own culture as well. Perfect, it was perfect, but I was overweight, so it was torturous. I've always had an ability to harness the lemonade in the middle of the sour lemons, something I got from my mother. I learned to have my own inner strength. I had to fake confidence until I actually believed it. And unfortunately, that meant being very introspective and missing out on a lot of the things that uh, kids participated in. Like, I've never been to a prom. I don't know what that's like. I was tall and I was overweight, and I was reminded of that by my siblings and my parents every single day. And so I was a bit of an outcast. I wasn't fat, I was zoftic. I was only fat to my parents and to these stupid boys in my stupid town where I was growing up where, you know, perhaps a zoftic woman is not the ideal beauty. But them 25 year olds and 30 and 40 year olds at the mall, you know, as I'd walk past them, I'd be like, oh, disgusting. But when I get out into the world, life is gonna be good. I'm gonna have lots of boyfriends and I'm going to do things on my own terms and I'm never coming back here until I'm over it onto something big and can say, look at me now. And I'm gonna be woman enough not to smack you in the face with it. I'm not upset with how I grew up. It was perfect. It was perfect, but perfection is also an illusion. And so when it came time for me to get out in the world and, and figure things out on my own, I had a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> this is our six week sneak peek. The six week sneak peek means six weeks, if we're great, we're back. If we're not, which there's no possibility. How you doing? <laughs> America. All right. Who knows what cotton mouth is? Let's get started. I've got fire hot topics. Come the Wendy Show has been renewed through 2022. Although Wendy's show was renewed, the iconic media legend has not been in her chair. Her marriage falling apart in front of the world, allegations of substance abuse, various health conditions, Wendy's life and career has taken a downward spiral in front of us all. Wendy was born Wendy Joan Williams on July 18, 1964 in Asbury Park, New Jersey. She is the second of three children born to her mother Shirley, who was a special education teacher, and her father Thomas, who was an English teacher and a school principal. The couple had a combined three master's degrees between the two of them and traveled around the world, often buying pieces to decorate their home. In 1970, the family moved to the upper middle class suburban community of Wayside in Ocean Township, New Jersey. As a child, doctors recommended that Wendy be medicated to control her hyperactivity. She was a brownie in the Girl Scouts and volunteered as a candy striper. Wendy graduated from Ocean Township High School in 1982, where she was an outcast and one of the few African Americans. As a poor student, Wendy placed 360th in the class of 363. She has said that growing up, she did not listen to hip hop music and instead listened to rock bands like ACDC, which were popular with her classmates. Wendy then attended Northeastern University in Boston with the intent of becoming a television anchor. Less than a month after starting, she switched from television communications to radio because she could advance her career faster, a move of which her parents disapproved. 
Wendy graduated in 1986 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in communication and to please her parents, a minor in journalism. She was a DJ for the college radio station and had LL Cool J as her first celebrity interview. She also interned for Matt Siegel at KISS 108 radio station where she would recap the soap operas like Dallas and Dynasty on the air. Yeah. Oh. Who put that fat rock on your hand? There's no fat rock. Mm -hmm. Nah, the other one, the left one, the left hand. Anyway, Ralph, no, is no. it time to go into another break? Is it time? <laughs> no, no, Big no. up to Brooklyn, thanks for turning us on. I'm talking about Video Music Box now, even though we are at KISS. This is the studio, everybody, and I just want you to know one thing. Why don't you know, you show us, like, you know, different things. Okay, here, okay. This is the studio. I can't... I can't really show you a whole lot of stuff around here because there's really not a whole lot to show you, but I do have to say that I'm not operating in my usual big chair tonight because otherwise it would take up too much room and then the men wouldn't really have a lot of room to operate around the studio. But I do have to say that I have a lot of fun here at my job. Um, I did go to college. Did you guys go to, did you guys go to college? You finished? Never. For a year, you never finished. Oh. Well, it doesn't really matter. I don't think any of us really need college, you know, to do what we're doing. But I did go to college for four years because I heard the parties were great, and they were. <laughs> but um, I went to Northeastern University in Boston. And a lot of people say that it sounds like I'm having a lot of fun here on the radio, and I am. Because let me tell you something. I sleep every day. Like, twice a week, I sleep 12 hours. Okay? I do. And then I lay on the couch, and I watch Oprah, and I might go out and get my nails done. Look, I have a perfect 10. I go out and get my nails done and everything, and I might go out for lunch, I might call up Scale or something like that and say, hey, you know, I'll take you to the Gap, you know, if you want to go shopping with me or something like that. But then I come in here and I only work from 6 at night to 10 at night, which are pretty good hours. And I really admire you artists, Ralph, I really admire the artists. I'm over here. All the, all the artists watching, I really admire you all, okay, and, and the actors and stuff, because when I was filming the Martin show, I was like, ah, we have to do this again? Radio is a one-shot deal. You just get in here and you do it. And a lot of people think, you know, that it has to do with your voice and stuff. I really don't hear a voice thing going on, you know. I just think it's a lot of personality. I just get in here and I have fun with the people, and I think I'm doing what comes naturally to me. And for anybody who's young and trying to figure out Am I getting too preachy? Uh, you have some shout outs. You have some people in there. Okay, first I want to shout out to my little sister, who's not my blood little sister, but, you know, she's my little sister because I give back to the community. Her name is Marlisha James, and she goes to St. Vincent in Newark, and she just celebrated her birthday this past weekend. So happy birthday. I also want to shout out to everybody in Jersey City. Hi, home people. Also, ladies and gentlemen, this is Skeletor. Hi, everybody. But the only way I told Skeletor he could be on the ca uh, camera is <laughs> if he turned around. <laughs> Cameraman, please zoom in on his bumps, because this is what I'm talking about, everybody. Look, the hair guy said he has to get him surgically removed. Can you I'm say? I'm not going to the hospital. Did you say? Did you say? <laughs> what does she have to show? See what I'm saying? Laverne. <laughs> this is Laverne, the intern, okay? Get off the camera. I'm trying to play fly girl all the time. I told you this is my show. Move. <laughs> Hi, everybody. No, really. The ratings for Kiss are doing really, really well. And I just want to thank everybody for listening because although you might think I sit up here and diss and everything like that, I'm just a positive person trying to do a positive thing. Trying to have a little bit of fun and make my mark in the world. Thank you very much for listening to Kiss. Really. <laughs> Wendy, why do you diss people? Oh, Ralph, let me tell you something. <laughs> I heard something about you. If you turn off the camera, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about Tribe Called Quest? I haven't what heard... Is them? Because I don't hear anything about you all. I think she has a diss <laughs> No. No, she has a diss stuff. She dissed me. All right? Two weeks after graduating, Wendy got her first DJ job working for a small reggae station in the Virgin Islands, but did not like the role because she did not learn as much about radio from her co-workers as she had expected. Due to the low pay and being away from her family, Wendy started sending resumes and demo tapes of herself to other radio stations. In 1987, she left the reggae station after eight months and took a position at an oldies radio station in Washington, D.C., but soon found out that the oldies radio format was incompatible with her personality. Wendy continued sending tapes to other stations and in November of 87, she was hired by a station in New York called WQHT. She was a fill-in on the weekends. When the station hired her full-time in 1988 to work overnight shifts, she then left WOL. But Wendy was eventually fired from WQHT in 1990. She then started working overnight shifts at a contemporary 
radio station called WPLJ before being hired by another urban contemporary station, which was WRKS later in that year. Initially working as a fill-in, WRKS gave Wendy a non-compete clause and a permanent morning position in May of 1990. She soon became a radio personality gossiping about rappers and celebrities. As her popularity grew, Wendy was moved to the evening time slot in April of 1991. And by 93, she was the highest rated host in her time slot in the New York City market, and she received a Billboard Radio Award for Personality of the Year. In December of 1994, Emmis Broadcasting purchased WRKS and switched Wendy to the company's other hip-hop show, Hot 97. However, she was fired from Hot 97 in 1998, but was then hired by a Philadelphia urban station called Power 99 FM. Her husband, Kevin Hunter, became her agent, and she was very open about her personal life on air, discussing her miscarriages, her breast enhancement surgery, and former drug addiction. She helped Power 99 FM to go from 14th place in their ratings to number two. In December of 2001, Wendy returned to the New York airwaves when WBLS hired her full-time for a syndicated 2 to 6 p.m. slot. By 2008, Wendy was syndicated in Redondo Beach, California, Shreveport, Louisiana, Wilmington, Delaware, Toledo, Ohio, Columbia, South Carolina, Emporia, Virginia, Lake Charles, Louisiana, Tyler, Texas, and Alexandria, Louisiana, among many other markets. Wendy left her radio show in 2009 to focus on television program and spend more time with her family. She was also inducted into the National Radio Hall of Fame. On July 14, 2008, Wendy debuted her daytime talk show, The Wendy Williams Show, in four cities. And after a successful run, Fox signed a deal with DeBar Mercury to broadcast the show nationally on their stations, beginning in July 2009. In addition, BET picked up cable rights to broadcast the show at night. By 2010, BET started airing the show internationally in 54 countries through BET International. Wendy hosted a game show for GSN called Love Triangle in 2001, for which she and her husband, Kevin Hunter, served as executive producers. Wendy played a judge on the Lifetime Network show Drop Dead Diva in 2011 and served as a guest judge on The Face in 2013. She was also a contestant paired with pro Tony Dovolani on season 12 of Dancing with the Stars. She was eliminated, however, second. Wendy appeared in the movie Think Like a Man, which was based on the book written by Steve Harvey in 2012, and she also starred in its sequel, Think Like a Man 2. In February of 2013, it was announced that Wendy and her husband slash manager, Kevin Hunter, were launching a reality television production company called Wendy Williams Productions. The company would produce unscripted content, including reality television and game shows. Wendy also executive produced a biopic for Lifetime called Aaliyah, the Princess of R&B, which premiered on November 15, 2014. The film attracted controversy due to its depiction of Aaliyah's relationship with R. Kelly. The project received negative reviews from the critics. In September 2015, the documentary series Death by Gossip with Wendy Williams premiered on the ID channel, both hosted and produced by Wendy. Wendy was on a roll. Her life and career on the outside appeared to be successful and viewers watched daily year after year as her show continued to be renewed. From the beginning of the show, Wendy had never missed an episode until February of 2000 so that the show would have somewhat of a live audience. Shortly after, production on the show was halted, and then the show re-emerged as the Wendy Williams Show at Home, broadcasting through video chat from Wendy's apartment. The show continued on through May 15th of 2020, when production was halted yet again 
due to a flare in Wendy's Graves disease. In July 2020, Wendy announced that her show would be returning to live broadcasting in studio on September 21st of 2020. In 2020, Wendy also competed on the fourth season of The Masked Singer as Lips, where she was mostly sitting due to the weight of the costume. She performed the song Native New Yorker by Odyssey and was the first member of Group C to be eliminated and unmasked after her first appearance. Wendy signed a deal with Lifetime for a documentary, which was called Wendy Williams' What a Mess, and a TV movie, Wendy Williams, the movie based on her life. Now that was the politically correct version, the Wikipedia version of Wendy's life. Now let's get to the T, what we all came here for. Now we know Wendy Williams as the queen of shade and the queen of prime time media, okay? We know that she has been a trailblazer in this arena. But let's not act like Wendy has not been surrounded by controversies. She's gotten into it with every celebrity that you can think of, okay? Now let's take a trip back down memory lane and take a peek at some of these controversies. Now, did y'all know that before Kevin Hunter, there was another husband? That's right, child. Wendy was married to her first husband in 1994. His name was Burt Gregory. Burt first met Wendy while working at a New York City radio station. They dated for two years before getting married with the marriage only lasting for five months. Now, in 2019, Burt did an interview with Radar Online and said that he was completely unaware of Wendy's alleged drug use, but came to realize after they split that the addiction could have explained her erratic behavior. He said things started going strange right from the beginning of their marriage. He said it was very bizarre. She just turned into a different person. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't understand a lot of things that she did. I didn't understand what her motivations were. He said that Wendy's antics got so out of hand until they had a big blowout and the relationship became very strained. He said that the marriage was a failure from the beginning, stating that it got off to a bad start shortly after exchanging vows. He described Wendy's bizarre behavior as flippant and said it could have been related to her alleged drug use. He said, I know she said she was doing drugs, but she kept that away from me. I assumed that she was, but I didn't know anything about it. I know I was seeing strange behavior that I didn't understand when I looked back at it. So he's saying, you know, she could have been on drugs. I didn't know anything about it, but the erratic behavior that could explain it. Now that she's coming out saying that she was addicted to drugs, well, that about does it for me. He says that explains the erratic behavior. Chris Brown and Wendy Williams. Now, Chris Brown's beef with Wendy Williams started when Perez Hilton tweeted, I hope at Chris Brown doesn't watch. I'm talking about him on the Wendy Williams show today and I'm going in. Now that definitely got Chris Brown's attention. So he tweeted back, thanks for the publicity. Your insecurities are manifested by your hatred, Princess Perez and Wicked Witch Wendy. He also called them flunkies. <laughs> he later tweeted, can't take advice from two buff chicks when one can't stand to look at herself without plastic surgery and the other is forever on his period. Yikes. Now, just a few minutes after that, Chris tweeted, but then later deleted another insult that read, who cares? It's old. You're old. I'm not going anywhere. Face it and live with yourself. Now, of course, Perez could not just sit back and let that go without having a proper response. So he wrote back the lyrics to Drake's Hold On, We're Going Home. He also clarified Chris's original nickname of him by saying, that's Queen Perez. Hashtag bow down. Now, child, that's a hot mess, but I'm not even going to blame Wendy Williams for that one. That's Perez's and Chris's mess. Leave my girl out of that mess. Angie Martinez and Wendy Williams were both powerhouses in urban radio in the 90s and 2000s. The two women broke barriers in their reporting on hip-hop at a time when it was male-dominated. Naturally, the powers that be would try and pit them against one another as opposed to enforcing girl power. However, Angie revealed in her memoir that it wasn't the men who stirred up drama between the two. It was Wendy's gossip, and the two came to blows in an epic behind-the-scenes showdown. Angie Martinez details the fight with Wendy Williams in a memoir that she wrote in 2016. She chronicled her life as a hip-hop radio personality. She got her start at Hot 97 in New York City at just 16 years old and worked her way up from intern to radio host 
and interviewed some of the biggest names in rap, including the late Tupac Shakur. Her and Wendy both eventually worked at the station during different time periods and were two of the most popular radio hosts, but they had differing styles of reporting. Wendy was famous for airing out people's dirty laundry, while Angie took a more journalistic approach. When Wendy revealed Angie's personal business, it landed her in hot water with Angie. You see, Angie was dating the rapper Q-Tip at the time, and Wendy had made shady comments about Angie and Q-Tip's relationship. Wendy said on her show, one of my co-workers is dating Q-Tip from a trial called Quest. Oh well, I guess some women like men who like men. So this pissed Angie off. Angie said everybody was gay to Wendy. Angie wrote in her book, every rapper you could think of in that era, I had heard Wendy Williams call them gay. Not one or two, like every one of them, okay? Angie said that she confronted Wendy about the matter and things escalated. Angie said, I lost my freaking mind. Before I knew it, I was swinging at her. It was a quick scuffle. It only took a few seconds for me to realize that she wasn't even hitting me back. She was just trying to get me off of her, okay? According to Angie, a co-worker separated them and Wendy grabbed a mop that was nearby in case she had to defend herself against Angie again. Angie said Wendy was holding the mop and just standing there with the mop looking like she wanted to have some sort of sword fight. So Angie said even in the moment it was actually funny. Now that is some tea all right. Now Angie she's absolutely right about Wendy because Wendy said everybody was gay back then child. Every rapper that you can think of Wendy has called them gay all right. Listen in the comments and in the chat below. Who can you think of that Wendy has called gay? <laughs> now, Method Man and Wendy Williams have a bit of a history, okay? Back in the day, the two of them were feuding because Wendy Williams had made light of Method Man's wife having cancer, okay? She had exposed it on a radio show. And then when Method Man showed up to interview with Wendy Williams, she turned him down and wouldn't have him on the show. You know, he was really upset about this and the two of them were feuding over that, okay? But now in recent years, Wendy Williams exposed Method Man, saying back in the day, the two of them had a fling. They had a one night stand where she actually took him back to her condo and bathed him. Check this out. Island with the whole clan and their people. And I, I said to him, I guess I batted my eyes and, you know, rocked my shoulders, you know how you do. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. And I said, um, I said, you know, you want to come over? And he said, yeah, I'll follow you. And I said, give me your hand. And I grabbed his hand and, and he, he put his head down and I put my head down and people didn't even realize at the time it was Wendy and one of the biggest stars, the lead of, of the leader of the biggest group in the world mm -hmm. just left, got in her Pathfinder and went back to her penthouse in wow. Jersey City, where she bathed him in her jacuzzi tub. Wow. And, and smoked more um, weed. You know, that was back in the Coke days. I don't remember what he did. I'm not gonna implicate him on that. Um, um, I did give I don't him know if I'm asking too much, but you know, was it, did you guys go all the way? Yeah. Now, of course, Method Man's wife, she was not having this and she shot back on Instagram with a few comments of her own. She said, Wendy girl, you tried it. Diddy and Wendy Williams. Now, back in 1998, Wendy suggested that Diddy might be gay, which led to Diddy reportedly getting Wendy fired from Hot 97. Now, Wendy, I told you she accused a lot of rappers of being gay back in the day, but Diddy was not letting her get away with this, okay? When she put those rumors out about him, he got her fired from Hot 97. The two had been beefing for quite some time for many years, but recently they put the beef behind them and Wendy had Diddy on her show to promote his documentary. The two squashed their beef and they actually joked and talked about it on the show. Now, I don't know if I, you know, believe that some of the rappers that Wendy accused of being gay were gay, but Diddy, we always side eyeing Diddy. Now, he might not be fully gay, but honey, I think he's, you know, bi, he goes both ways. He likes a little eh every now and again. He's freaky and he does things. I believe there's some truth to these rumors. You've heard them and I believe there's some truth to them. 
Now, do I believe the others? I don't know. But Diddy, he wasn't having it. He got her ass fired. <laughs> Wendy Williams and NeNe Leakes. Now, back in 2014, Wendy had let everyone know what she thought of NeNe Leakes having a graffiti Birkin bag, and the review was not positive. NeNe, of course, responded back by saying, whether Kim and Kanye have way more money than me or not, I'm still out here getting money. And in an interview with Madame Noor, NeNe also went on to say, the deal is I supported Wendy. I was supportive of Wendy. If you rewind the tape all the way back to season one, when she first opened up her show for the first week, I sat on her show for a full hour and I helped her when she launched her show that week. I would like to think that I've been on there more than any other reality show star. Nene further explained that she also later appeared on Wendy's 500th episode and gave Wendy a Celine bag as a gift to mark the occasion. Nene noted that whatever Wendy thinks of what she did to her Hermes purse or her place among the other celebrities like Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, she is a businesswoman out there working hard. Now, she said this, whether Kim and Kanye have way more money than me or not, I'm out here getting money. So you should at least give me my props, girl. You know I ain't been out of a job. I've worked my ass off out here. I wouldn't have even cared if she criticized my bag, but she tried to lower the cost of my damn bag. And then she tried to act like I'm not out here working every day, getting money. Girl, bye. I'm so done with you right now. I know why you're doing this and you know why you're doing it too. You just another one of these haters. Just hate to see another sister come up. Women need to support women more often. We really do. Nene added, if you are out here doing something big, I will never put you down. Just don't try to take nothing from me. You don't have to like me, but you don't have to take nothing from me. Now, though, thinking about it, I wish I hadn't even responded. Now, what y'all think? I mean, I know people be hating and everything like that. But girl, Nene always thinks somebody hating on her. But I'm agree with her. You know, women really do need to support each other more often. But since then, Nene and Wendy, they have actually um, squashed their beef. And she's been on the show and they actually patched things up. So drop down in the comments and if you remember this beef and let me know what you think about that graffiti bag. Kim Zolciak Beerman and Wendy Williams. So in 2015, y'all remember when Wendy and Kim had that beef when Wendy reportedly implied on her show that Kim was faking a mini stroke that had actually landed her in the hospital. Now y'all remember at that time, Kim was on Dancing with the Stars and Wendy insinuated that Kim faked the incident to get sympathy votes from the viewers. Kim then went on to social media, writing on Instagram, absolutely appalling at wendy williams how disgusting for you to insinuate i faked my mini stroke on your show this morning you mad because i didn't come on your show this clearly shows your warped mentality now what y'all think y'all think that she was out here faking strokes <laughs> you know i've heard other people be accused of faking strokes but honey kim was accused of wanting to get sympathy votes by wendy Kim wasn't having it, honey. She went up there, posted a little girl with a tutu on Instagram and said, honey, I wasn't faking nothing. I had a stroke. It left me some I paralyzed. I was in the hospital. Thank you, everybody, for your prayers. What do you guys think? Drop it below. Wendy and Amarosa. Now, y'all remember this one? This one was legendary. Amarosa went on the Wendy Williams show to promote her upcoming book, but instead she spent more time trading insults with Wendy than promoting her book. Wendy said that she wanted to throw her off the set. Now, the altercation started when Amarosa first walked onto the show and she said she wasn't pleased with the way Wendy had introduced her and she said she would not be disrespected. Things got even uglier when Wendy grabbed Amarosa's book cover to hold it up to the camera and Amarosa snatched it back out of Wendy's hand. Now, the yanking gave way to Amarosa then attacking Wendy's appearance asking Wendy whether she had had a nose job and also said that Wendy should not wear wigs. But Wendy didn't stay quiet, okay? Throughout this heated interview, she called Amarosa a typical angry black woman and suggested cosmetic injections 
could fix her wrinkles. After this iconic battle, Wendy later said that she did not have no reason to ever invite Omarosa back to the show. She said that's done. She had her moment. Now, what do you guys think about Wendy calling her in typical angry black woman? I got a problem with that, Wendy. Now, I know this was back in the day. I know this was, but I got a problem with that. Typical angry black woman. You know, we got the light skin pit against the black dark skin typical angry black woman i got a problem with that y'all drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this but this was a legendary battle y'all remember amarosa amarosa she said anybody could get it she was not to be played with back in the day y'all know she was on the celebrity apprentice 2004 i think donald trump celebrity apprentice amarosa was that girl Mariah Carey and Wendy Williams. So y'all remember Mariah Carey's reality show, Mariah's World, right? Well, during the airing of the show, Wendy had some critiques about Mariah, calling her too fragile for reality TV, and also suggested that director and friend Lee Daniels also thought the show was a bad move and that Mariah should not be putting her life on camera. Mariah did not like that and her and Lee Daniels went on social media saying, he's the bitch that's fragile. Don't come for us unless we call for you at the Wendy show. I'm the bitch that's fragile, okay? I'm the bitch that's fragile, okay? I'm the bitch that's fragile, okay? Ow! Ow! I'm the bitch that's fragile, okay? I'm the bitch that's fragile, okay? I'm the bitch that's fragile, okay? Ow! Ow! So what Wendy had actually said on her show was this. So Mariah's friend, Lee Daniels, hates the fact that she's doing reality TV. She's been used, she's been abused. I don't know if it's a wise idea for her. I think that geniuses have to be saved from themselves. Now, Wendy claimed that Lee had previously said this about Mariah. Wendy then said that she also felt that Mariah had been fragile since the beginning and then told Mariah that she believed she should rest rather than put her private life in front of the camera. Wendy said, it's my opinion and it's always been that reality TV is not for Mariah Carey. Clearly, Wendy's words didn't sit too well with Mariah Carey, Lee Daniels, or their fans. And a slew of Mariah's fans took to Twitter to comment on the apparent call out. Now, some of them were praising Mariah for throwing what looked to be a whole lot of shade Wendy's way. One girl tweeted saying, Mariah's like, Wendy square up. And another one wrote, don't come for Queen Mariah unless she calls for you, Wendy. Charlemagne the God and Wendy Williams. Now this one is a surprise to me seeing that these two used to work on the radio together, but now they don't even talk. Charlemagne explained in his book, Black Privilege, that Kevin Hunter was extremely aggressive in trying to get more money out of situations. He said that he'd often yell at and threaten people till he got what he wanted. He says, I can't lie. It worked for him and Wendy, but it wasn't how I wanted to do business. Charlemagne says that the last time he had contact with Wendy Williams and her husband, it was just a bunch of yelling and screaming. He said in an interview in 2017 with People Magazine, at that time, he hadn't talked to Wendy in seven years. He says, I haven't talked to her since February of 2010. The last time I had a conversation with her, it was just a bunch of yelling and screaming. It wasn't nothing productive. Charlemagne was actually fired from Wendy's past radio show, The Wendy Williams Experience, in November of 2008. But according to Wendy, it was because of downsizing. Charlemagne says, no, 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 that is not true. It was a bad business deal with Kevin Hunter that led to the firing. Now, you know that these two were on the radio together and they had a lot of controversial airings and tapings. Now, we have one right here where they had a letter sent in to them uh, by a female that was in a housing project. And she said DJ Mr. C's had come in to see a transgender female. Check this out. It says Nicole. So she emailed it and she knows I don't get my emails. Nicole, can you please pass this to Wendy? I don't have a fax machine, but I want to tell her about what I experienced last right night regarding mm 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 mm. <laughs> yeah, I know who it is. <laughs> she already sent it to me. <laughs> How'd you like that though? Mm 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 mm. Perfect. Oh. Just the right amount of syllables. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> oh. I'm glad Vaughn's not looking. I know he hates this. Oh, yeah, here she goes. Hi, Wendy. 
My name is LaShonda. Last night. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my coat. I'm leaving. I bring a 40 with me. <laughs> While I was going into the hallway of my building to go into the incinerator room to dump some garbage. Oh, <laughs> and, and as I finished, I was walking back to my apartment and I noticed, mm, 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 Damn. came out of the elevator and was looking for an apartment. I've been in a few clubs where mm, 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 has DJ before. So I knew him instantly and I said, hey, mm, mm, mm. And he smiled, hey, what's up, baby, to me. And I smiled back, and then I went to my apartment, closed the door, kept quiet, looked through the peephole. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Citizen swoop down. Wait. <laughs> swoop down. <laughs> Yo, I hate this show. I hate this show. I hate it. I seen, mm, 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 mm. he went into the apartment next to mine. Wendy, a tranny lives in that apartment next to me. <laughs> now, I've told you about this DJ before, and I've told you he likes, he's not just gay, he likes trannies. He is legendary for years. Since I've been in New York, I've been hearing that. Though. Oh, and that's what he likes. Trannies. It's not just a gay thing. It's trannies. You can call with him at the light and everything. Yep, that's what he likes. That's what he likes. And everybody knows your business. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, the unmitigated gall of Wendy Williams. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and you can figure out the radio station by just following the employment timeline of Hollywood. Wow. Well, you wow. can. Wow. You can figure wow. out who it is by you going, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> No, you can't. Are you crazy? Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> can you figure it out by that? You can. Can you figure, mm, 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 No, mm. no, I need to hear that. Thank you. No, but you're not on a college campus. You're like an old man. Let me ask a college girl. <laughs> no, college funny. girls, can you figure out, mm, 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 mm. What? Put that where? Back there. Well, not really a full-time tranny because sometimes he goes out dressed like a boy. But everybody around here knows him. He's mad cool. Anyway, I was shocked that mm, 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 went next door. And at first I thought, that might be family or something. Yeah. And maybe he's going to visit family. But mm, mm Wendy, it was 11 o'clock to midnight. Booty call time. DJ lessons. I even called my girlfriend, because she'd been my friend since we were small, and told her about it. So, Wendy, I stayed up until 2 a.m. watching Play to Win. What, what is that? Some um, game show. Look, people are calling on the warm line. Don't you tell them. And if you do say it, only tell Hood Hef. Don't tell anybody else, because it might be mm, 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 mm. Is that somebody asking? Oh, hang up, hang up, hang up. Put that where? Yeah. Right there. I was up till 2 a.m. watching Play to Win, trying to win some money. And Wendy, why did I hear sex noises coming from the apartment next to mine? Could have been a porno. So I got my friend back on the phone because I couldn't believe mm -mm 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 -mm, was having sex with a tranny. I turned down the TV and put my ear to the wall. Wendy, they was having sex like Animals. It was loud. Oh, yeah. From the time I was listening, they went at it for maybe a little over an hour. Me and my girlfriend had a good old time cracking up and listening. I don't know if he even knew that was a tranny, but I don't see how he couldn't know because he looks like a man dressed in girls' clothing. You can even tell by his voice that he's a tranny. Maybe it was mm -mm 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 -mm, first time. No, LaShonda, mm -mm 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 -mm, is an old queen. Mm -mm -mm. He's lived. Hollywood, you look hurt. I don't know, Wendy, but it was funny just listening to them. Now, everybody <laughs> else in the room can hear a story like that, take it for what it is, and go home and make rice aroni and go to bed. Hollywood gets really hurt by hearing his heroes like that, and you will really think about this for 48 hours. No, nah, I just say live and let live. I mean, I don't think no judgment. Whatever, whoever he having sex with, whatever, that's his own business. Yes. And he's always shown me respect. Yes. So Probably wanted you. 
Well, why? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Put that where? That's well, why when you talk about it? No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't put that trap look so good in a wig with some lipstick on and a dress. <laughs> like a dress trap up. That beautiful lean figure you have. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like one of my DJ needles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, we have to go. A shout out to mm, 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 mm. all I'm saying is bon vivant, but really, your business is, I mean, that's all. That's disgusting. He likes trannies, Ron. Why are you looking at me? You want to know who it is? Yes, you do, Cat Daddy. I'm coming right in to tell you. That's mm -hmm. disgusting. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Um, we have to go. Child, Wendy done beef with everybody. Wendy has beef with everybody and they mama. Now check this one out between her and Lil' Kim. No wonder why she got a beef with Lil' Kim. Check out what she said about the queen. headlines because of her dramatic new look. Um, it's not necessarily a new look. It's been over the course of maybe the last decade. She's just been getting stuff that looks like done, done, filled, filled, filled. It's filled so tight now, Kim. It looks like a pin would just pop you. <laughs> um, anyway, Kim is claiming that the blogs have been altering her pictures and trying to sabotage her images for ye or her image for years. Now, let me just say, I agree with Kim on this particular one and then I'll dial it back and tell you what I really think. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the picture that, um, okay, for, this is the picture that she says was photo. See, take the pin and pop her, she'll fly right back to Jersey. <laughs> Look at me. This is the picture of little Kim that she says was doctored. Oh, because her fans are saying, oh, you're lightening your skin, you're filling your face, too much uh, plastic surgery. I must tell you, the same evening, and take note to the leather around her decollete, the furry stuff, and the necklace. This is another picture from the same evening where she doesn't look, see? See? That's a big chin piece. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, all right, so let's do the up and down comparison, and I'm gonna break it down, because I'm on little Kim's side. You know how after you've had a, like a nice big meal, and you go in for that hearty belch? And... <laughs> saying like they might have caught her in in mid expression we've all been there before this certainly does not look like the same person down here and as far as the lighting the lighting clearly is different in both places so i don't think that these picture this picture right here was photoshopped i think they caught her you know in mid something or another <laughs> but let's just take it back to um the essence a uh, little kim in 1999 Kim, in my mind, I know your goal was always to look like LaToya Jackson. You've out latoya LaToya in your new look. I just, and, and don't blame Photoshopping, blame your plastic surgeon, girl. Tupac Shakur and Wendy Williams. Everyone remembers Tupac's feud with Biggie, but he also feuded with Wendy Williams. I got a beef with Wendy Williams saying I got raped in jail because that disrespected me, my family, and what I represent. Tupac explained this in an interview with Angie Martinez. He retaliated by dissing her in the song Watch Your Mouth, telling her to go on Jenny Craig to lose weight. Now, I know back in the 2000s, Wendy accused a lot of rappers of being gay, but disrespecting Tupac saying that he got raped in jail, that was just downright disrespectful, and Tupac wasn't having it. He went on and made a song about it. Okay, now, what do you guys think in the comments? Please drop it down below. Do you think that Tupac got raped in jail? And what do you think about Wendy calling all these rappers gay back in the day? Was it some truth to it, or was Wendy just being shady now all i got to say is two words whitney houston we all know the drama between whitney houston and wendy williams all right you guys first there was mary j blige and j-lo and mariah carey who else did we talk to that we thoroughly luxuriated in that we wow some of you might say Janet, but not the same. I don't know why, but I could take that or leave it. I would love to have it, but if I didn't have it, it damn. 
Oprah just celebrated her 49th birthday yesterday. I idolize her. But even Oprah, like, it's not the same. <laughs> take, it or, take it or leave it. You know what I mean? Okay, let's go in. Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Lord. Have I waited for this day? Have you? Well, yes, I have. Haven't you? Whitney. Yes, dear. Absolutely. I know it. I don't you, believe that I've ever met you in my entire career. Ain't that funny? You talk about me all the time. And you are top billing. Is that why you talk about me all the time? Absolutely. You, even me. you don't even know me. Uh, but the, here's the thing. I talk about you in two ways. In the, in the way that the media talks about Whitney, yes. but I always talk about you as being one of the greatest voices of our time. Mariah Carey is another one. You two do two separate works, but you have a voice that is just unbeatable, Whitney. I love you, Whitney. I thank you for that. I really do, because I know, in spite of everything, you play my records. I do. I know that. And I also feel like you and I have something in common. We do. Um, well, yeah, besides, besides the, you know, the motherhood thing and, okay. and, and, and so on and so forth. Whitney, you're, you're your new CD is out now. Yes. The first week, it did very well. It's not doing quite as well right now compared to perhaps what the record label thought it would be doing. Well, it's never what you thought I should be doing. Okay. It's never what you think I should be doing. It's never what you think you say I'm doing. It is what's going to happen. You see what I'm saying? I don't want my album to peak too quickly. I don't want it to peak too quickly because I want to go to the summer uh -huh. and the fall. Okay. I understand. So there is a, a plan. Okay. You, don't, you understand what I mean? Like you said, your schedule on a day-to-day -day basis. Or who you going to talk about, how you going to talk about them. Yes. Well, that's how I do. So we play, we love the song, the Dear John Letter here on the show. Yes, ma'am. And um, speaking of letters. You no longer have to write to Bobby. Bobby's out of jail. Bobby's back home now. Yes, baby. You ain't, don't you? You get on this. Hold on. So you got the four one one. You should know. I want to make sure that I have all my stories straight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby. He's home. Well and intact. Do you regret Diane Sawyer interview? No. Why should I? Well, it didn't exactly show you in the best light. You don't think so? Well, you don't end it. You don't show yourself in the best light. People still listen to you. Yeah, but I'm on the radio every day. Yeah, we, see, you know, we just don't get to see your face, but they should know what you look like. I understand that, uh, Whitney. Perhaps one day I will have a TV show, but in terms of what I do, yeah. when I'm not shown in the best light, I guess mm -hmm. one of the best things that I love about my career is, is that there's always tomorrow to come back. See, and I love about my career is uh -huh. that my music speaks for itself. Yeah, well, it does. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I am the second wife most interviewed behind Monica Lewinsky in the history of interviews. I'm surprised you're second to her. I mean, as far as... You know, I mean, you're not, like, too cool about coming behind her, but, you know, it's all right with me because, um, you know, I got a lot of mileage from that. And I think that people, basically, the people that I talk to that have made comments to me uh -huh. were very proud of me because it was a moment. See, I'm not one for sitting down and talking to people. I, you know, you can talk all you want about me, but my mother always said, don't try to find a lie with truth, you know, because then you make it worse because people like to lie for whatever reason they like to lie on you about. Right. However, um, I thought that it was a major step for me to sit with Diane Sawyer, the biggest interviewer in the world, and talk with her and give her what um, basically um, I thought I could get, you know, and I think people enjoyed that, seeing me and seeing um, me growing and being a spiritual person and that I have a family that loves me and cares about me and protects me and um, that was the um, idea well Andy. yeah no it, it was very entertaining you thought it was entertaining uh, yes Ah, you're funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, please, me and everybody, I mean, we were all watching together. I recently... It was a very funny moment. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, from from start to end, it was quite entertaining, Whitney. Well, I'm glad you were entertained, because you watched it, didn't you? So, so Whitney, as, as far as you stand with drug use, is there drug use going on at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney, you. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't ask me no questions like I'm a child. You talk to your baby about her, what, what she going to be uh, confronting or what she got to deal with. And, uh, and Don't and, ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. My child is a little boy and I will talk to him yeah, about drugs. Don't talk to me about that shit. But listen, Whitney, what, I, I, I will talk to my son about drugs because I have Don't been me, where Wendy. the Don't world speculates day. where you Don't are, me, which is, I, I was a full-blown cocaine addict. So well, I, 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 not mine. Move on. Well, you know, that was my problem, Whitney. You helped yourself. Did you ask God to help you? And and no, I ma I managed. Thank God, because I have a good man, and, and, so, and so thank God I was able to just rise 
up Thank above God, it Wendy. and quit. And all I ask is, okay, okay. And you on Diane Sawyer also mentioned that um, you'd want to see receipts behind the drug use. Which, yeah. Man, if I spent that much money, somebody better give me the receipts on your tax return. Well, speaking of spending money, so recently I was hearing that you were trying to trim the budget, which, by the way, Whitney, I thought that this was something very... I mean, who the hell are you get your information from? Who's calling you and telling you? Um, uh, well, I got this story from a gossip named Steve Hers. You ever hear of him? No. Well, like you said, gossip. Yeah. Steve yeah. Hers is a West Coast correspondent, and um, we we uh, I communicate with all the different gossips. Uh, it's it's what we do, you know. Uh, you guys are all gonna have a gossip lunch, huh? Something like something like that. <laughs> anyway, Whitney. Yeah. Uh, they're saying that um, you're doing some massive budget cuts. I'm doing massive changes. And you know what? Yeah. I, I wanted to let you know that this is something I think is good. This is a good Whitney thing. You like it. You approve. Yeah, I really approve. Oh, Whitney, please. Listen, they were saying that you were uh, you cut your mother's um, See, you don't know what the allowance. See, don't make me curse on the radio. I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, come on. Well, Steve was saying it was from about like $1,600 a week to about $500 a week. I you to kiss my Okay. He and also don't anybody else ever think I'd do that to my mother, you low down dirty He also was letting me know that Michael, Gary, and your sister Donna, who run your nippy company, are also uh, experiencing the slashes across the board. They were saying that you have a 24-hour-a-day bar on site at your studio that you're now cutting down and you're not making your personal chef available to people to just come up in your house and just order food and stuff. I think that's all good. That never happened. I don't even know what the heck you're talking about. Well, I have no idea what you're talking about, Wendy. How is Bobby Christina doing? Growing and being a beautiful young lady that God sent her here to be. Yeah, she's nine now, right? Yeah, she is. Mm. When your husband was um, incarcerated for those few days, what types of things do you tell her concerning, like, do you say, like, daddy's away visiting Boston? Or? I don't really talk to her. A retard? She was, she's a spit patient? She's a child who has intelligence. Okay. My child is smart. No, what I... I talk... To shut your mouth. I talk to her like she's an intelligent human being, okay? And I give her just as much as she can handle for a nine-year-old because I'm her mother, okay? And that's how we deal with it. Never mind what I told her, but she know the deal. Well, a lot of a lot of parents, a lot of parents whose spouse or what have you goes through something, a lot of, Particularly because that was only eight days. Would it be to take him out of school for the eight days or take him away from watching TV to... You know, see how I long. do what I do to protect my daughter, Wendy, just like you would do to protect your son, okay? All right. You are very defensive, Whitney. I have to be, Wendy. You talk about me every f***ing day. Well, Whitney... And every other day. Whitney, you, you keep yourself in the headlines. No, Wendy. Y'all keep me in the headlines. I mind my business. I try to maintain what I got. I want to know what I'm doing all the time. I don't give a shit about what you're doing all the time. As long as you're healthy and God is best in you and you're doing the right thing and being a decent person, I can handle that. When's the last time you talked to Robin? About a week ago. Uh-huh. Because I know that you and Robin were girlfriends from when you were growing up. And, and we're still friends, girl. Okay. Um, will she be working back with you, or is she still... Wendy, 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 Wendy. Yeah. Is Robin not doing anything? No, Robin don't work for me. She'll work for me now. Moving right along. Uh-huh. Okay, so okay. so okay. Our, our king of R&B, is he working on an album? Bobby, is Bobby working on an album? Yes, ma'am. When do you think his album will be out? Uh, very soon, Wendy, I'm sure. A numerologist came on the show the other week, oh, hell. and we we ran you guys' yeah. numbers. And for what it's worth, the numerologist said that you and Bobby are so right for each other. Honey, he, he's so right. He's never been more right in his life. That's the most rightest thing you ever said. Yeah. Thank you, Whitney. Uh, uh, how's your father doing? Not well, Wendy. Yeah. Um, the, his partner, Kevin Skinner, um... You don't want to talk about him. Moving right along. And I didn't talk to him, Whitney. I don't want to talk about him. He's not my friend, okay? Okay. You want to be my friend? I like to be your friend, I think. Well, you're so defensive. Is this how you treat your friends? No, but you're not my friend. You just said you want to be my friend. That's what I want. See, see, I want to be your friend. When's the next? I am your friend. When's the next time you're gonna hit the big screen? I'm working on it, dude, girl. I'm working on it. I got some script today. I'm gonna read, read it on them and look at them. But you're not very careful about the movies I do. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's just a matter of time. Great. So how long do you think that you're going to be, uh, how long will it be between albums? Have you already started um, mulling over in your head when your next album's going to come out and what kind of material you're going to be working with? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Have you spoken to Brandy since she had her baby? Yes, I talk to her maybe every week. Wow. Yeah.
I, I mean, because you're, the kind of money that you have is like, you know, beyond most people's imagination. When dear friends like Brandy have babies, do you actually pick out a gift for them or do you send like an assistant to... No, no, I pick out my gifts, darling. What did people, you... people are personal to me. I pick my own gifts out. What did you get for Brandy? I got her um, a silver rattle that um, Tiffany rattle, and I got her picture frame that um, has my name and Bobby's name on it, Auntie Whitney, Uncle Bobby, and Cousin Chrissy. And, you know, it's like a family thing, so that she has a keepsake for the rest of her life. Do you ever do simple things like go to the grocery store? Yeah, I was yesterday pumping gas. Yeah? Yeah. And what, kind of, what kind of car were you putting the gas in? I was putting gas into a white Hummer. Wow. And so, do you, do um, did you get it in your neighborhood so they're already used to seeing you, or did you get it elsewhere? No, I got it in uh, my neighborhood. Do you live a relatively normal life in that in that area where you live? No. You constantly have people in the woods trying to take pictures and all that. Hello. Thing? I mean, come on, Wendy. You don't make it any better. <laughs> but um, actually, yeah, I have people in the woods and in the trees and, and want to follow me and yeah, the whole nine yards, Wendy. Yeah. 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 So when it's just you and Bobby Christina in the house, the three of you, um, who who is part of the staff of your house who's always there as well? You know, besides Jesus. <laughs> I got, I got you. <laughs> Jesus, constantly. Okay. Anybody else may come and go, but he's a constant stay. How's how's your mom doing? Does she live there in the house? And she's a constant stay too, but she does not live with me. No, my mother does not. I have family mostly around me: my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my niece, people like that. How do you get along with Bobby's baby's mother? <laughs> You are hysterical, girl. Oh, my God. You are so deep. I mean, oh, you're so, like, you know, like, nosy. Ah, I am. You are so nosy, man. I am. It's not just you. I'm like this with everybody I with me. I guess some must be like, mom. No, he asked the questions. That every other word from him is, but why? But why? I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Um, what did you say again? <laughs> How do you get along with Bobby's baby's mother? We can all just fine. We can all just fine because we're grown women. And um, I love her babies because they're my stepchildren, and I care for her children as if, you know, they are mine when they're with me. So um, you may take that relationship with your stepchildren. Me and Bobby's baby's mama don't have any problem because I don't create none, and if there is something, I can finish it. Yeah. Well, if we can, we can talk about it and get an understanding. Has there ever been a conflict as far as maybe Bobby Christina getting more attention from Bobby? No than the other kids? No. There's always that, you know, there's a constant, you know, where the kids get together and they, you know, constant normal shit, you know, but basically, um, you know, it's it's pretty normal. But Bobby gives his children, you know, this kind of attention that when they're together, they're his children. Yeah. But of course, you know, he's my husband and he lives with me and Chrissy, so she does it more of the time. Did you get on Bobby after you saw the BET making up Jar Rules video? Because the rest of the country was kind of like, wow, look at Bobby. He, Bobby was kind of tossed up during that video. Video, Whitney. Get him in it now. Bobby looked high, Whitney. He did. Bobby looked. Oh. <laughs> 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 see, there was Ty Rule in there. There was Bobby. There was other folk, but you ain't said shit about them. Yeah, but but Bobby. Yeah, because yeah, all you want to come shit on is Bobby. No, as a matter of fact, Bobby was pretty cool, honey. He did his gig. He's thug eleven. What? Come on, you talk to me. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. Is 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 Bob? I I realize that being married, you know, your money is is you know Bobby's money and vice versa. Right. But um, when you know, so you guys don't have any money problems. Well, no, Wendy, not to sell my estate as you said on the radio yesterday. Oh, no, I didn't say you were selling your estate for money reasons. I said you were selling your estate to get more privacy. You know? Oh, I understand. No, no. Okay, thank you, darling, for clarifying that. Were you, no, I, I, I'm not selling my estate, and um, Bobby and I are doing just fine. Thank you. Were you were you responsible for Bobby leaving New Edition? I didn't even know him then. No, 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 no. The second time around when they did the the Come Home tour. No, no. I said no at all. They had their own relationship. Have you ever encouraged Bobby to uh, possibly, you know, because the guys from New Edition um, have interviewed and said that they would love if Bobby came back, you know, That's to the That's Bobby's group. world. It's not mine. It's his decision. He's a New Edition member. I'm not. Did you ever hear that, that, that people were buzzing that your relationship with Wyclef was really close and that Bobby and you fought over it? You, really? 
Yeah. No, 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 we don't do that. Why? Because my friends, we grew up together in the hood. He for me started to so am I. And um, that's about as far as that goes. And we musically um, do work together, and that's it. There is no battle. There's no fighting. That's crazy. Well, at one point, there was a beef between Bobby and Babyface. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well why don't you talk to Bobby and Babyface about that? You know what, Whitney? You what, are baby. You are something else. <laughs> I've been waiting to talk to you, Wendy. I love you, darling. When are you coming to the studio? When am I coming to your studio? Yeah. You really want me to come there? I would love that. Oh, my Lord. Well, we got to make a date, okay? Yes, we do. Look, uh, do you uh, want to have more children? Yes, I do. I want a little boy. Mm. I want a mama's boy. And you're going to be 40 this year, right? Oh, tell the world, why don't you? Oh, you low-down dirty dog. Whitney, you look great. Yeah. Thank you, baby. I feel good, too. I Thank mean, you. The, uh, the only thing is that you said, um, Whitney will never be fat. No. I was like, how dare her? Never. Who is that, a diss to all fat girls? No, I just won't be fat. Sorry, not good, not healthy. Have you ever heard anybody being fat being healthy? Well, you know, being extremely fat or being extremely thin, like on with you on the Michael Jackson well, special. Either, either extreme is not good. Yeah. Not good at all, okay? Yeah. Not good at all. So, uh, you know, pull it together and move on. You smoke weed? Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Mariah Carey was on the show and said that she loves you more than ever. I love that little lamb chop. And I just wanted you to know that. How I love feel? that lamb chop. She's my girl. Have you? Uh, yes, yeah, she is nice. She's very sweet. She was here like two weeks ago. Yeah, she's a bomb. She denied her breast implants. Do you deny yours? Ah, no. See, that's no. my girl with me. No. I got them too. Uh, I mean, aren't they the no. best? I mean, you know, it's like what? I mean, you know, if you want to go for it, go for it. You know what I mean? Do you ever wish that you got them bigger? No, my husband loves them. Yeah, 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 yeah. He loves them. Yeah. They sit nice. They're very well proportioned with you. It's just that at one point when you lost so much weight, though, they did look like two baseballs on a stick. Yeah, they look really weird. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. I'm sure that when you look at yourself in the mirror, you have some reservations about your looks, too. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I know how you look. Hey, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, Wendy. Come on, baby. Do you keep in touch with Eddie Murphy? I know you guys were... Uh... No. Now, is it that you were showing respect for your husband because you and Eddie dated or the... Yeah. Oh, got gotcha. you. Well, that's... To me, that's how it's supposed to be in everyday life. You know what I'm saying? When you go on and you marry... Come on, Wendy. He's a bad man. I'm a bad woman. I mean, we see each other. We speak to each other professionally. And yeah. 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 Bobby um, has had a reputation occasionally to step out on the marriage. Oh, really? Say the gossips. Okay, thank you. Has infidelity been one of the biggest issues in you guys' marriage? No. What would you say the biggest issue is in you all's marriage? You people. You f people like to run your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. If you could, if you could take back anything that you told Diane Sawyer, what would it be? If I could, if I could say something that I didn't say, okay, I wouldn't come to anybody. I got a problem with you to kiss my, and I love you, but I don't live for you. I don't live for you. You talk about me. You 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 call me out my name. You you you, you make my mother call me and ask me questions. You make my father sick. You make my brother sick. You make my childhood. You don't talk about me like you know me. You ain't gonna you never see me in your damn life. But you talk about me. That's not right. There's a limit to what you can say. And if I was really like that back in the day in North, I'd meet you outside. I'd meet you outside. But I'm a lady and I have a class. But I'll talk to you, Wendy, because I love you, because you're a fan. I know it. I am. I know, baby. I'm a fan of your not entire sure. experience, though. Not just no sh like that. Those are fighting words. You know what, though? Rebel. I'm a fan of yours, not just the music, Whitney. I'm a fan of you, the woman. Thank you. Because my mother's very proud of me, Wendy. She is. She loves me. And she respects me. That's what matters to me, that my mother loves and respects me. Who's, whose idea was it to set up that Diane Sawyer interview? Me in L.A. Are you done with the talk show circuit? I mean, will you do loud? Yep. So you done. So you won't go back on Oprah. You won't do Larry King. Oprah and I have a relationship. She and I talk. We'll do something. That's my girl. Yeah. Do do any of your um do any of your um celebrity girlfriends, whether it be Oprah or Angela Bassett or anybody like that, do they ever try to like um ride the train of his Whitney on Coke and let me talk to her to get her off? You know, 
They make you to break it. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. the name of the game. But I don't break. I'm not made of glass, baby. I come from a line of heritage, of strong heritage, legacy. You can't break me. So when you sit down and you have a little glass of something to drink, what's your favorite drink? I mean, you know, is it, is it Cristal? Is it, you know, Hennessy? Yeah. I'm not a drinker, baby. I, I like to have a sip of wine every now and then and a little, um, there's a drink being Bobby, I call the Bobby Brown, and like a table that's mixed with, all right? God, Whitney. What, baby? You are a real trip. I've been around the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's, how's uh, Dion doing? Dion's doing very well, thank you. We had an auntie who just passed away, a very close auntie to ours, and we just buried her last week, and I saw Dion, and it was really good to see my lady. Yeah. Yeah. So, your father's $100 million lawsuit, is that done? It. It's okay. And you guys are, he's dropped the lawsuit, and it's... It's Wendy. I love my daddy. My daddy loves me. I believe that, Whitney. I, I know it. I thought it was some mess when I saw it going down. I... Mm. Do you think that, um, although your parents are divorced, them worrying about you in this demonic thing <laughs> called show business, uh-huh. you think that keeps them together in their own way? Yes. Your father, um, wasn't your father dating or married or something like that? To He's a, married now. Yes, right. wife, yes. Yes. How do you get along with your stepmom? Just fine. I get along with Peggy just fine. Peggy. We get along just fine. She's a sweet lady. Does your mom date? Yes, yeah, she does. She minds her business, too. So how will you be spending Valentine's Day? With my husband. I bet you all have wild circus sex, don't you? Oh, my God. Well, you don't make me meet you outside. Come on now, you're getting too deep. But I can just it, it, you, you could take a picture, couldn't you? Yeah, you were such nasty. You were such passionate people. You're nasty. <laughs> just wild circus sex. <laughs> you know what, Whitney? Would you what? ever think would you ever think about writing a book on your life? I might, somewhere down the line. I wrote a book. Um, it, it's with um, Atrium Books. There's mm-hmm. some, their boutique label of Simon and Schuster, and it comes out in fall of 2003. Oh, I'm gonna get it. And I just found. Are that, you reading yourself? Yes, I am. Good. Yeah, and you want to know what, Whitney? I what found thing? that it, it was the most therapeutic thing. I know. That I've know. ever done in my life. I know. See, I do that, but I do it with my spiritual partner. You see what I'm saying? You know, I do it with my prayer partner, and you know, that's my therapy. Do you still go to church? Yeah. What church do you go to? Oh, when I feel like it, it's right there in my heart. Okay, okay, I got you. Uh-huh. Well, Whitney, I want to thank you. Thank you, Wendy. For giving me this moment and not hanging up the phone. No, I wouldn't do that to you, baby. And I'm being talk through. And being as sassy as you want to be. <laughs> Ah, uh, Wendy, I love you because you support me and um, you've been you've been good to me on the radio. However, you know, watch what you say, baby girl. But Whitney, watch what you do. And if I know it's not, you don't even know what I do. Like you said, you never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me. But talk about me. So watch what you say. That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you is watch what the f- you say. But Whitney, what, baby? I would love to have you come in the studio. Okay, love. And we'll I make would, a date. You call my machine, I'll call yours. I would, I would love to be able to All right. read your body language. Ooh, as I don't we, have any idea. I'm sitting here chilling on the Miami balcony just talking to you. Are you? Yeah, baby. Just finished eating some chicken. What's the weather like? It's like 74. And who's all in the room there? It's my dog and my secretary and, and Joey Payne from Arista Records, who is pacing the floor. And, well, now why is Joey pacing? He wants and to like, you know, you, you, you don't, do you feel a froggy, but not leap. <laughs> Whitney, Whitney, have you ever, has it ever gotten so bad we ever would consider suicide? Hell no. Got a child to live for. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Work with me. I won't leave you. I love you, Whitney. I love you, too, Wendy. Y'all, and we can't forget about that time when Wendy and her husband, Kevin, were accused of plotting to kill Miss Jones of Hot 97. It all started as a sexual harassment lawsuit. Now it's all about murder for hire. Wendy Williams earned the title Queen of All Media with her top-rated syndicated radio show, aired in New York on WBLS, and her upcoming TV show airing on Fox 5. In a federal sexual harassment lawsuit, her talent booker, Nicole Spence, claims that Wendy and her husband, Kevin Hunter, tried to hire a hitman for a rival. 
Ms. Spence recently learned that defendant Hunter had asked a male employee who was working at the company at the time to help him find someone to kill rival radio personality Tarsha Jones, also known as Miss Jones on radio station Hot 97, because he was apparently angry over some comments that Miss Jones made about his wife on the air. A spokesperson for my Hot 97 colleague, Miss Jones, says this is a very serious allegation and very unfortunate if it's true. But that's not all. The lawsuit also claims similarly. Miss Spence also learned that defendant Williams herself asked that same individual to help her get someone to kill her husband, defendant Hunter. Wendy's camp vehemently denies the murder for hire plots. Ms. Williams and her husband, Kevin Hunter, say the allegations are absolutely and completely false. The spokesperson adds that Wendy and her husband are looking forward to putting these negative rumors to rest. We were unable to verify with the NYPD if any complaints were ever filed in connection with the alleged murder for hire plot. As for Nicole Spence, her attorney Ken Thompson says he expects her to be fully vindicated in federal court. In Midtown, Lisa Evers, Fox 5 News. So the woman that filed the harassment claim was a talent booker at Wendy Williams' experience show, and she claimed that she was hounded to have sex with Wendy's husband, Kevin. Speaking more detailed of the sexual harassment claims, Nicole said that Kevin repeatedly sexually propositioned her at work in the most crude and vulgar ways, telling her over and over that he wanted to F her. Nicole also feared Kevin because he repeatedly physically assaulted Wendy at the radio station often. So she was afraid that he would do the same to her. She said that one time Kevin stormed into the studio demanded that other employees leave and openly physically abused Wendy pinning her against the wall with his hand around her neck choking her while repeatedly pounding his fist into the wall directly by her head now when Miss Jones was interviewed about the alleged murder plot she claimed that Wendy had nothing to do with the murder attempt but some people in Kevin and Wendy's camp were said to know about the alleged hit. Miss Jones claimed that Kevin tried to get her killed when she was on vacation in Aruba. She said that she found out about the murder attempt within the first day of her trip. She tried to alert the government, but they didn't do anything to protect her. The government didn't do shit. Miss Jones recalled during her interview. They didn't do anything and I didn't do anything because my husband at the time said he would take care of it. She claimed that while Wendy had nothing to do with the murder attempt, some people in Kevin and Wendy's camp knew about the alleged hit but opted to not tell her. She says, I really could have been taken out and this is what's messed up. This only came out because the people at BLS in Wendy's show supposedly knew about this because later on it came out in a lawsuit. Now the lawsuit she's talking about is Nicole Spence, okay? And Miss Jones says, I feel some type of way about that because you have to put your own human decency in front of your job and nobody from that camp bothered to say anything or send a little kite or something or something to let me know what was going on. Now, she continued in the interview that Nicole Spence, the girl who tried to sue Wendy and Kevin for the sexual harassment at work, was the one that knew about the hit and only brought it up in her court hearing. Miss Jones further said in the interview that when Nicole went to the station management allegedly to sue about Kevin harassing her, they wound up settling out of court because Nicole supposedly had proof of threesomes that her, Wendy, and Kevin had been partaking in and BLS station did not want that information getting out to the public. They did not want it to hurt their ratings. So they settled and the story just kind of disappeared so that's when she went to the station management allegedly to sue and i hear that they wound up selling out of court because allegedly she had proof of threesomes that she and wendy and kevin had been partaking in and bls didn't want no smoke and that's why that shit went away now those are the words of miss jones Woo child the tea is hot wendy and them down there trying to kill people for wendy to get a spot on a radio station
But even through this, Wendy went on to be very successful, getting a TV show and it being renewed season after season, year after year. The success in her career, success in her personal life, having a son after multiple miscarriages. Wendy seemed to have the world at her hands, have the world as her oyster, have everything that she wanted in life. But things would come crashing down with the infidelity of her husband Kevin Hunter and as it played out in front of the world we watched Wendy fall apart it is the Daily Mail bombshell headline that has talk show fans talking and tweeting non-stop and today we have the first pictures of Wendy Williams heading into her New York City studio less than 24 hours after Daily Mail TV broke the story of husband Kevin Hunter and his alleged mistress. After a year-long investigation, has Wendy's husband been caught leading a double life with another woman? Here's a recap of our exclusive story that started it all. The other woman at the center of the Daily Mail investigation is Sharina Hudson. She's a massage therapist who Kevin moved into a nearly $760,000 secluded home. It's just nine miles from the Livingston, New Jersey mansion he shares with wife Wendy. Whether or not Wendy knows now about this double life that Kevin is leading, you know, who knows? Kevin and Sharina, they've been out together. They go to the gym together. I mean, we have them photographed everywhere together. He is not shy about being out with the other woman. And it's hard to believe that Wendy wouldn't know about this. When Kevin and Sharina run into someone they know, he calls her his sister. What's really stunning about this story is that he was frolicking on the beach with Wendy. You saw the pictures, they're amazing. I mean, she's in her bikini. Um, and he's in his swimsuit and they look all lovey-dovey. Not days later, when he came back to New Jersey, he was with Sharina. He spends half the time with Sharina and the other half the time with Wendy. That is a double life. This morning, the talk show star has become her own hot topic as she addressed her audience as soon as she hit the stage earlier today. It's weird doing hot topics and being a hot topic. <laughs> It's some sort of weird story going around the internet regarding my husband. Now look, I'm a straight shooter, pow pow. <laughs> All you gotta do is Google him and you see the story. You can believe what you want, but... Okay. I stand by my guy. All is well in Hunterville. Don't believe the hype. And if there was hype, believe me, you. I would let you know. But sadly, as we would all see, there was some truth to the rumors. And Kevin and Sharina ended up having a baby on Wendy. And Wendy just, that just further added to her downward spiral. And we just watched Wendy decline right before our eyes. Our first caress. them because allegedly there are emails alleging that Chloe and Kylie leaked the emails alleging that allegedly <laughs> fake, Kylie is saying it's an alleged fake relationship do you think and and China just wants publicity do you think and and even promised the Kardashians would film extra episodes to make up for the cancellation of the China and black show like, we'll do what you want. We'll do what you want. Chloe allegedly said that she was concerned for their. <laughs> Norman, I can't. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't. And she probably got five new boyfriends.
We haven't caught anybody coming out of the house yet, but you know, just a matter of time. She's not lonely. Yeah. I apologize, I apologize. Yeah. I apologize, I apologize. And then, and then we talked about this the other day. Where were you? Okay, okay, we talked about this. Okay. Um, and I insist that you knock on the door and act a fool. Like, who are you? Where's Danielle? And then maybe sucker punches you in the face and yokes you up in the corner. You know, two old men fighting, but not really fighting. No one wants to break anything. And the understanding is that, Morty, you're not gonna get her back. Alan doesn't want her. This is all for a plot line. Danielle, Danielle is smart. She knows the score. Oh, I'm exhausted. You still, you still have to explain. So, her wedding episode hasn't even aired. It comes out on December 30th on Bravo. Mm -hmm. Day. Today's our last day of work, man. For two weeks. Yeah. Kevin's on the, on the airplane right now. He should be at home when I get there. He hasn't been here since he left for college in August. I know. Good times, good times. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to send best w wishes to Remy Ma. She's back in the hospital oh. after complications from the pregnancy. Oh. They say she's doing better, but she's still in the hospital. Hospital, So get well, Remy. She also continued on with the embarrassing conversations and often caused controversy Monday, in the things that Wendy she Williams said. Wendy comes under fire again. Like, like really? Like, are you serious? On Wednesday, the daytime talk show host introduced a segment about the death of 19-year-old TikTok star Swavy by complaining that he had more followers than her on TikTok, but not on Instagram. I have no idea who this is, neither does Norman, neither does one person in this building. Maybe Sus does. Uh, do you know who Swavy is? Clap. Clap if you know who Swavy is. Okay. Sus? Nah, it's not my, it's not my cup of tea. The clapping eventually stopped, which is when Wendy went on a minute-long discussion about the teen, also known as Matima Miller's social media following. He's a TikTok star. He's got more followers than me. 2.5 million. Oh. On TikTok, but on Instagram, you have more followers. Yeah. Well, as my son Kevin would say, no one uses Instagram anymore. What? And as, <laughs> as far as TikTok, I don't use that at all. Uh-uh. I don't know what that is. I don't want to be involved. <laughs> then the 56-year-old turned to a photo of the young dancer and revealed he had died. So here he is. <laughs> He's 19, and he was murdered Monday morning. Swavy died from an apparent gunshot wound in Delaware. Wendy's moment went viral, with many calling for the show, which is in its 13th season, to be canceled. ET has reached out to the show for comment. All this comes just days after Wendy received backlash for comparing her failed marriage with ex Kevin Hunter to Tabitha Brown's marriage after the social media star told her fans that her recent successes have allowed her husband Chance to retire from his job as a police officer with the LAPD after 15 years, something she called a quote, dream finally come true. I was married to one of those. You know, I make the money and so on and so forth. Go live your dreams, buy a business, you know, stay with me, but go, go, go. You see how that turned out. I predict that this marriage is gonna be on real rocky ground in a moment. Live your dream. 
Shortly after that segment aired, Tabitha took to her Instagram to respond to Wendy's comments, claiming her marriage was nothing like the TV personality's marriage. Wendy, the pain you must be in to feel this way, and I'm so sorry. But listen, let me tell you this. Um, 23 years I've been with my husband. Yes, uh, broke for a very long time together. Struggled for a very long time together. Succeeded for the last couple of years together. Tabitha ended the video praying for Wendy to find the same kind of love she's experienced. And she captioned the clip, quote, Keep God first. This is my word and prayer for Wendy Williams and anyone else that doesn't understand this type of love and support. God bless y'all. When E.T. caught up with Wendy in January, she got candid about her nearly 22-year marriage to her ex-husband, with whom she shares a 20-year-old son, Kevin Hunter Jr. I stuck with um, my ex-husband because we had a son. If we didn't have children, I would have been out, you know, I would have been out. Uh, but we had a son and we were living, my career was doing better. Every year my career would do better. And every year Kevin would turn into more of a jerk. And the daytime talk show host opened up about the future, admitting she knows her TV show won't last forever. I like doing something besides this talk show. In 2019, Wendy seemed to be on the men and went to the ladies on The View and told her story. I think I can speak oh boy, for the table. We go. And, we go. <laughs> well, I think we, I can we speak for go. the table and say, we are so happy that you are here. You have been through a lot of public drama this year, and we have been rooting for yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I watch you all every day. So being here is very, very much like home with a bunch of girlfriends. And I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, um, in April, you filed for divorce from your husband. Correct. Kevin, after nearly 22 years of marriage. Correct. And, uh, and 25 years being together. Being together. Correct. And um, because of his infidelity. Oh, well. Yeah. You know, infidelity is one thing. A full baby is a whole nother topic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you said, you said in the New York Times Magazine, I'm a very forgiving person, but there's one thing I could never be a part of, and that one thing happened. Mm hmm Oh, and well. That, yeah. And that was it. Yeah. The baby did it. Huh? A baby. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not changing pampers. I want to be pampered. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> Good luck. Hello. Yeah. Oh. Yes. And, and well, um, why would you have to change the pampers anyway? It's not I your don't baby. know, Joy. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's a joke. Yeah. Oh, it's You're just, a comedian. It's just a joke. Okay. Look, if I like the joke. I'm if just, we don't good. laugh, then we'll cry. No, yeah. Yeah. So I've learned how to, from my mother, right. uh, how to make lemons into lemonade yeah. in life. Yeah. I, 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 like, yeah. what, do I'm, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Stay in the house no. and Ooh. cry all day? Why would you? You have, you have a no. big career. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And you have a and life. You, what I loved about what you said in the New York Times Magazine, though, because I'm a child of divorce. And you said, but I will never speak badly about him no. in public. Right. No. And my parents never spoke badly about him. No, I, I saved that for when I get back to my bachelorette pad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It hurts the children. Yeah. It, yeah. it hurts the children. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's not just about young Kevin. Um, it's about, you know, Kevin's not a bad man, big Kev. He's not a bad man. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but you just can't throw away 25 years yeah. and then start talking about, you know, recklessly about yeah. the other person. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what does that say about you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I right. chose him. Yeah. And he chose me. Yeah. Right. That's true. You know, and, and so that's the way it is. And people change. Yeah. People do people change. change. Yeah. And I'm move. It's now time for me to move on with my life. Yes. There was. I didn't even go back and forth with. Oh, do we stay? Maybe there's a marriage counseling or something. No, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> you do this. Get out. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about a little bit about something else that you often, I guess, mention about. You've been addicted to various substances, whatever. I don't really know the details. No, just one. One. Cocaine. Okay. And that, that, that's that been so over, it's it's uh, like over uh, 25 years ago. Like, yeah. at the time I met Kevin was the time for me to make changes in my life. So, so, but you also just moved into what they call a sober house. Well, that was the place to, to go where you can really plot on the next part of your life. Mm -hmm. You know? Like we have. When you, when you see, but, but, but you know what? Without rehab, without wine. 
rehab where they take your phone and lock it in a safe. So <clears throat> people can't call me yeah. and inject their opinions on my life yeah. because, you know, it's been a very, very difficult time. Yeah. I couldn't talk to my mom. Mm. You know, who wants to burden her? Right. I couldn't talk to my sister. Who wants to? And, and most of my girlfriends would have said, you should have left him mm -hmm. a long time ago. <laughs> but here's the deal. I'm not a selfish mom. Mm. And I'm a very plotative individual. Mm. You know, I, like, I will plot on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And that's why I'm going into season 11. Mm -hmm. And he's changing pampers. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, like a lot of times your girlfriends are the ones that, oh, well, come over here. I got a second bedroom. Stay here or whatever. Or you sleep on the couch or, or move out or you do, do something. I'm like, no, that would have been selfish to my son. Yeah. He's an only child. You know, when you're an only child, I don't know that. I have two siblings. Mm -hmm. But you don't have somebody to talk back and forth with your siblings. Yeah. You know, you're, but when mom and dad are going through things. So I said, no, 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 no. I will stay here. I will make sure his braces get tightened properly. Mm -hmm. I will cook the best I can mm -hmm. at night. I will moisturize. I will, I will, <laughs> I will drive him to the SAT prep courses. Mm -hmm. I will help him do his essays for, mm -hmm. for college. Life goes on. And, Life yep, goes and on now he goes to college in Miami. That's right. And so now it's time to pull the trigger. And the trigger right. has been pulled. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, so, but, you know, Kevin will always be my family. You know, yeah. no matter what. And, and yeah. you know, that's that. Now, Wendy has always been open about her past addiction to cocaine. And since fading on her talk show in October of 2017 due to dehydration, she started opening up about other health issues publicly. In February 2018, Wendy disclosed that she has Graves' disease, which causes hyperthyroidism. Wendy accidentally fractured her shoulder in December of 2018, and in March of 2019, Wendy said that she had been living in a sober house for some time and that she has vertigo. Later that year, Wendy revealed that she had been diagnosed with lymphedema a condition that causes swelling in her ankles. And during the COVID-19 pandemic in September of 2021, Wendy tested positive for a breakthrough infection of COVID. Now at the start of her 13th season, Wendy was scheduled to report to her purple chair, but did not due to an ongoing medical issue. Wendy's longtime battle with Graves disease has been the cause of her taking several hiatuses from her show and she's not appeared on screen since 2020. Wendy's team states that she continues to be under medical supervision and she meets with her medical team on a daily basis. She's making progress but is experiencing serious complications as a direct result of the Graves disease and her thyroid condition. Doctors have determined that more time is needed before Wendy is able to return to her live hosting duties. Now, a source close to the Wendy Williams show said that Wendy is not going to return for season 13, but they will deal with the fall when it gets here to discuss the next season, but added that Wendy is very grateful for the guest hosts that continue to hold down the fort. And several guest hosts have filled in Wendy's absence, especially the former The View co-host, Sherry Shepard. She's been one of the most frequent replacements. And at first, there was a report that Sherry is said to be finalizing a deal with Lionsgate Debmar Mercury to become the show's permanent guest host. However, it later was confirmed that the role is actually going to be a permanent host. Now, there have been reports to suggest that Wendy could be suffering from dementia and has moments where she can't recognize people around her. They also suggest that Wendy sometimes has trouble getting around alone and needs the help of others to walk. And recently, Wendy's bank, Wells Fargo, froze her bank accounts, claiming that it did this 
to help Wendy. It was in her best interest because her financial advisor had recently witnessed telltale signs of exploitation, including Wendy's own express apprehensions. But they also said upon other independent third parties that know Wendy well, they also too shared these concerns. They felt that because she's not in her right state of mind, she could financially be exploited. But Wendy fought back and petitioned a court to overturn the ruling, allowing her to have access to her millions. Wendy said that she needed to pay her staff as well as her own bills, fearing that if she was not allowed to have access to her money, she would not be able to maintain her expenses or be able to pay her home mortgage. Now, Wendy is currently waiting for the judge to issue a ruling, so she's waiting on that. Now, after months of speculations and the public's concerns regarding Wendy, she finally issued a statement while walking on the beach with her son, Kevin. Wendy was looking rested and looked well, and also said in the video that she intends to come back to her show and will be stronger and healthier. Wendy says she intends to sit in her purple chair once more. So what does that mean for Sherry, y'all? What y'all think? Now, there's no denying that Wendy Williams is an icon, a legend, a force to be reckoned with in the media. She paved the way for celebrity bloggers, both big and small. She has had a wild ride and has had some of the most iconic interviews and moments in our culture. Wendy Williams is a true queen and we wish her good health, peace of mind and serenity. Now, what do you guys think about Wendy Williams returning to her purple chair? Should she return and host her show once more, maybe for a season or so, or should she retire? Should Wendy go on and live out her life, the remainder of her life, spend her millions and enjoy her family? What do you think? Please drop down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. This has been another edition of the Sweepy Diaries. You guys be sure to like this video, share this video, but most importantly, be sure to subscribe to the channel and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.